Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my top five tips for stronger pull-ups. If you're wanting to increase the amount of weight that you can do on a pull-up or increase the amount of volume, make sure you keep tuned in for these top five tips. I'm also gonna be showing some video demonstrations too. Before I kick on to the five top tips, I'd like to give a big shout out to our YouTube sponsors, Saga Fitness, who are specialists in blood flow restriction training. If you want in to find out more information about BFR training and the BFR cuffs that Sarg Fitness provide, please visit the link in the description. And also, you can get your hands on the upper and lower body cuffs with a 10% discount using the Boxing Science discount code. The first tip is to go narrow. So what I mean by this is to either go for neutral or a narrow grip pull-up. Now, the reason why we don't go for wide grip pull-ups is because boxers struggle with their shoulder mobility. So when they go for a wide grip pull-up, if they're not strong in external rotation, they will look to try and compensate in some sort of way. The two most common ways are to either internally rotate the humeral head, which will apply more pressure on this shoulder joint, or will tend to start compensating through the spine, so extension of the spine, and start to use the lower back. So we go for a narrow grip or neutral grip to make sure that that shoulder sits into that uh, neutral position, keep shoulders pinned back and retracted, and also be able to engage the core. So we go narrow or for neutral grip. This will help increase uh, lat activation and also bicep activation. These are the main ones that we want to improve on when we're doing pull-ups. I'll just mention there about increasing core activation. Uh, tip number two, uh, requires our hips and knees to be slightly flexed. This slight flexion of the hips and knees will help keep the core activated and restrict any kind of compensation coming from extension of the spine and using the lower back. Using the hips and knees and just slightly flexing them will increase that core activation. And also, you can, if you find it difficult, you can also gain a little bit of momentum by flexing the hips and knees a little bit more. And this is a safe and effective way to make sure that you're uh, achieving the amount of pull-ups that you need to. Tip number three is don't pause. So don't pause at the bottom. I see a lot of boxers and athletes when they're struggling with the pull-ups, let's say they get to the eighth or ninth repetition, they tend to have a little break at the bottom. Now this takes away the stretch shortening cycle of the lats, it takes away that momentum. So when you pause at the bottom, when it takes away that momentum, it makes that exercise a little bit harder. And also we want to improve the stretch shortening cycle of the lats because this can transfer into combination punching. So we don't want to pause at the bottom. If you're struggling through a set, either do perform clusters, which we're gonna mention in tip number five, or have a little pause at the top. Just make sure that you're squeezing them lats down, uh, squeeze at the top, try and take a little bit of weight off whilst you're at the top, and have your rest time at the top rather than at the bottom. Tip number four, don't cheat. Obviously this is quite obvious, but how many times have you seen somebody doing a pull-up and they do anything to get up to that top of the pull-up? Whether that's rounding the back, going side to side, kipping up. You wouldn't expect an athlete to do anything possible to do a, perform a deadlift or do a squat or do a chest press. You'd say that that's quite dangerous. We kind of get away with it with pull-ups because it's a body weight exercise, but it's still moving whatever you're body mass is, whether that's 60 kilos, whether that's 80 or 90 kilos, you're still moving a large amount of weight. So you can pick up uh, bad tendencies, bad imbalances, and also can um, increase the likelihood of injury whilst doing pull-ups if you start doing anything that you can to uh, perform uh, the latter repetitions when you're either loading up really heavy or uh, going to extreme points of fatigue. So make sure that you don't cheat, make sure you keep a strict form. So tip number five is to increase volume with clusters and eccentrics. On tip number four, I said the importance of not cheating. So this might limit the amount of reps that you're able to do. So let's say if you're hitting 10 pull-ups, maybe without this, this little bit of cheating that goes on, you might only be hitting seven or eight pull-ups. If you're not hitting your volume targets, you will not get stronger at pull-ups. So we need to make sure that we hit the volume targets. If you can't do 10 or 12 pull-ups, you need to make sure that you're hitting that first before you start doing weighted variations. So 
make, to make sure that you can increase the volume, there's two different ways you can do it. So the first one to increase volume is using clusters. So if you're struggling to get 10 repetitions out, a great cluster would be eight, have, uh, eight reps, have 10, 20 seconds rest, and then perform another two reps. Or go for six reps, rest 10 seconds, and then hit four reps, so as long as you're getting that volume. This is a really effective way of increasing that volume and hitting them uh, target rep ranges. And then eccentric, so if you're struggling to hit 10 repetitions, let's say you're hitting eight repetitions, do the final two as eccentrics because you're still getting the strength adaptations from the pull-ups by doing the eccentrics. So uh, to do this, you jump up or get a partner to help you up on the concentric, hold it at the top, and come down into the eccentric for anywhere between three and five seconds. So the maximum on that would be three repetitions. Uh, I really only go for, for two repetitions on that. So yeah, so these are my uh, top five tips for pull-ups. If you've got any questions about any of the techniques that we use at Boxing Science, please leave them in the description below. And thanks very much for watching. I hopefully see you on the next video.